First, I'm John Bachman. For the second time this week, a Canadian soldier is dead after a high-profile attack. Today, in what appears to be a coordinated effort, one gunman opened fire at the National War Memorial near the Parliament Building in Ottawa. Dozens of shots were fired inside Parliament. Police also confronted and possibly killed one of the gunmen there. But they say they are also looking for other shooters. They could still be on the loose. Police reported shots fired at a nearby hotel and mall. They've also been warning people in the area to stay away from windows and rooftops. The Parliament Building and all military bases have been put on lockdown. Earlier this week in Quebec, a terror attack involving a car killed another soldier. Investigators say the suspect, Martin Rouleau, had recently fallen under the influence of radical Islam. He drove his car into two soldiers near Montreal, killing one of the soldiers. The other victim's injuries were described as less serious. Rouleau was eventually shot and killed by police after a chase. Canada has also recently raised its terror threat level based on Internet chatter. Also new today, a jury hands down guilty verdicts for all four Blackwater guards charged with the 2007 shooting in a Baghdad square. Several innocent Iraqis were killed in that shooting. Nicholas Slayton was convicted of first degree murder. Three other guards were found guilty of voluntary manslaughter. Slayton faces life in prison and the other men are looking at 30 years behind bars. The men insist they were shooting in self-defense. And the CDC announcing new Ebola screenings for travelers. The Centers for Disease Control says anyone entering the United States from Liberia, Sierra Leone or Guinea will be monitored for a 21 day period. The measure goes into effect on Monday and travelers must check in with health officials to get their temperatures taken every single day. Well, today is the last day in a hospital for Ashoka Mukpu, the journalist who caught Ebola while working with NBC in Liberia. Doctors have declared him disease free and he's being released from an isolation unit in Nebraska. An Indiana man who's confessed to killing seven women has been in court today, but he said nothing during his hearing. Right now, 43-year-old Darren Van is charged with just one murder, but other charges are expected. The bodies of those women were found in abandoned buildings around Gary, Indiana, and police are now scouring other vacant buildings. Our number one priority is public safety. Uh, we went through approximately about 120 structures today uh, just to make sure that there was no one in the vehicle, any the uh, structures and to make sure that they can be boarded up swiftly. Well, Van has a history of violence. A decade ago, he doused a woman with gasoline and threatened to set her on fire. In 2009, he was also convicted of rape in Texas, and many are wondering what he was doing out on the streets. Also today, the Washington Post editor who guide the paper, guided the paper through the Watergate investigation has died. Ben Bradley helped transform the Post from a sleepy paper in the nation's capital to one of the country's leading sources of news and information. Bradley was 93 years old. I'm John Bachman. We'll have another Newsmax Now update coming up for you in 30 minutes. We'll now send it back to Midpoint with Ed Berliner.